Hello listeners, this video focuses Henry Fielding's Joseph Andrews. Henry Fielding was an English novelist. He is an irony writer and dramatist. He is best known for his earthy humor and satire. His comic novel Tom Jones is still widely appreciated by the readers. He was born in the year 1707 and died in the year 1754. During the time of Henry Fielding, it was the emergence of novel writing and drama writing. So previously, people were writing prose and poem. Along with Samuel Richardson, Henry Fielding is seen as the founders of traditional English novel. Let us see the novel Joseph Andrews. This was published in the year 1742. This is a full length novel and the full name of the novel is The History of the Adventures of Joseph Andrews and his friend Mr. Abraham Adams. This novel Joseph Andrews is a Picarist novel. Meaning of Picarist is there will be many adventures in the novel. And there, is, there will be a roguish character. Roguish character will appear to be a hero, an appealing hero to the readers. And usually that roguish hero will be from the low social class. And he would be living in a corrupt society. The novel is of the genre of prose fiction. Henry Fielding writes this novel subtitle as Written in Intimation of the Manner of Cervantes, author of Don Quixote. The meaning of Cervantes is a term to mention a servant or a lady maid. So, in particularly, people only mention Cervantes in order to mention a servant. It can be either male or a female. And this word Cervantes comes from Spanish origin. And we must note that this novel has this subtitle because this novel is based on a Spanish novelist named Miguel de Cervantes, his novel Don Quixote. So though the novel has the hero as Don Quixote, there will be another character traveling in the novel that is Sancho Plaza. Sancho Plaza is a neighbor of Don Quixote. So similar to this novel, when Henry Fielding reads this novel by giving the hero's name to the title of the novel. So if we see this novel, the name of it is Joseph Andrews. So along with Joseph Andrews, there is another character who travels with him that is Abraham Adams. So similar to Don Quixote novel, Henry also creates this work. Abraham Adams also plays a major role in this novel along with the main character Joseph Andrews. There is another background story and it was during Henry's time Samuel Richardson was a famous novelist. Samuel Richardson in his time he anonymously published a novel named Pamela in the year 1740 and in the novel Pamela is a woman of virtuous character. She safeguards her chastity throughout the novel. Even when men try to seduce her she safeguards her chastity and by this character and behavior she reaches high level in the society. As soon as the publication of the novel, it attained major success at that time. Reading this novel, Henry Fielding, in order to play a counterpart to this novel, he mocks at this novel by creating his own novel as Samila in the year 1741. He makes mockery against Samuel Richardson because his major point is that even men's chastity is equally important as of a woman. This character Samila in the novel, she gives importance to money and lives her own life however she needs. Now Henry Fielding again creates one more novel that is Joseph Andrews. Here in the novel he reinforces that chastity is important even for man. So he gives a new genre to this novel as 
comic epic poem in prose so the novel has comedy the novel is a epic poem epic poem has a long narrative structure which will be of a poetry format so in between the novel there are many poems included again it is in the prose structure this novel has four books let us see the main characters of this novel first is joseph andrews he is the title hero his parents will only be revealed at the end of the novel joseph andrews works as a servant and there will be a small twist in the novel to find out joseph's parents second character is abraham adams he is 50 plus aged person he is the second hero of the novel third character is fanny goodwill fanny goodwill is a heroine of the novel and the lover of joseph andrews she is a beautiful and attractive woman she is a milk maid next is sir thomas booby sir thomas booby's wife is lady booby these two are rich squire that is sir thomas booby squire means a man of high social class he owns an estate in a rural area especially he is a chief land owner of that area lady booby has a nephew he is called as squire booby he marries pamela pamela is a sister of joseph andrews and pamela this character is taken from richardson novels pamela i told you previously that pamela is a virtuous woman that character henry fielding includes in this novel next is mr andrew as the novel begins mr andrew will be shown as joseph's father but only at the later stage his true parents are revealed let's now begin book 1 summation so unlike the character of pamela who is shown as a virtuous woman in samuel richardson novel here in this novel joseph andrews is a virtuous man he is a gem who ignores all the ways of lustfulness joseph andrews when he was at the age of 10 he joins as an apprentice with sir thomas booby first he was employed as human scarecrow human scarecrow means a person has to scare the crows and birds that can be done through shouting or by throwing he is employed as human scarecrow because sir thomas booby says that his voice suits that job now after few years he becomes a hunt man's subordinate now at the age of 17 joseph becomes a handsome guy looking at his handsome appearance lady booby appoints him as her personal footman joseph is a strong religious man he is very pious and he is perfect in attending churches and when he is regular to church he meets abraham adams there abraham adams is a parson parson means a clergy now this clergy adams he likes the character of joseph and they become friends abraham also teaches him latin by getting permission from lady booby abraham already knows greek latin and many other languages but abraham unfortunately he has an habit of forgetting important things but only this negative can be seen in abraham adams he is a kind good natured man he lives a poor life he has wife and six children his annual income is 23 pounds lady booby takes joseph wherever she goes this itself spread as a rumor in the society that lady booby has an urgeness to joseph now lady booby's family totally they take shift to london as the entire family moves to london joseph also accompanies with them even in london people admire joseph for his genuineness and wonder how he is he is a footman for lady booby lady booby takes pride in saying that joseph is her footman and subsequently in the following days sir thomas booby dies and after his death lady booby's whole attention turns to joseph 
she also tries to get his attention but it fails. Now using this situation Lady Booby shows hatred and dismisses Joseph. Joseph Andrews writes letter to his sister Pamela by revealing that Lady Booby has dismissed him. Now Joseph is at the age of 21. He moves away from the house that he stayed in London. At this time Joseph Andrews he meets Mrs. Slipslop who is a chief maid in Lady Booby's house. She is around 45 years old. She too has an attraction over Joseph. She too tries to attract Joseph using this chance. Using the dismissed chance, she tries with him. But it fails as Joseph says that he just had an intention like a mother with her. Hearing this, Mrs. Slipslop gets anger. She talks ill about Joseph to Lady Booby, saying that Joseph has pregnanted a maid woman. Also says that he has interest over many lady maids. She spreads this rumor to the entire house. Hearing this, Lady Booby gets anger and immediately Lady Booby calls Peter Pounds. Peter Pounds is a steward who takes care of wages for the labourers, that is the servant labourers. Lady Booby tells to settle the accounts for the servant Joseph Andrews. This character Peter Pounds, he lends money for high interest by cheating the servant's wages and he takes profit out of the servant's money. Now even to Joseph Andrews, he did not settle the money. He just tells him that he doesn't have any accounts to settle the money for Joseph. Now the present condition of Joseph is he does not have any money with him. He doesn't even have a spare cloth. He then borrows a dress from one of a servant and leaves the house at 7 p.m. Now Joseph in his mind he plans to leave London and thinks to return to Paris and to reunite with his fiancée Fanny Goodwill. She is a milkmaid who lives in Parson. Joseph Andrews leaves London by walk. Now when he was walking on road he was attacked by two ruffians. Ruffians means robbers. These robbers take small penny amount that Joseph had. They also steal his clothes and leave him nude by attacking him. Joseph could not manage to fight with the two robbers and he faints and falls on the road. Now there was no one to help him. The time was 2 a.m. now. On the road there was a stage coach that arrives by that side. Seeing that Joseph weeps. And no one in the stagecoach attempts to help Joseph, fearing that they may end up in problems. A man named Posterian, he comes from the stagecoach and offers his coat to new Joseph. Also the stagecoach passengers, they fear that Joseph may die and they all take him to an inn which is close by. And in the inn, Mr. Torwowzi is the owner of the inn. His wife, Mrs. Torwowzi. And the inn has a maid chamber named Betty, who is 21 years old. Now, Torwowzi, seeing the condition of Joseph's severity, he calls a surgeon to take care of Joseph. Also calls Betty to provide one of his dress to Joseph. But... Tov's wife refuses to give him clothes. Finally, Betty, seeing his condition, she gets an hostler's dress and gives to Joseph. The character of Mrs. Torwowzi is revealed here. She is a stingy woman. Now, Betty, when she looks Joseph, she likes him and plans to seduce him. Now, to the inn, a man named Barnabas, he arrives. He is a clergyman. Looking at Joseph's condition, he talks to Joseph. He says that due to the sin of Joseph, Joseph is struggling now and says him to ask forgiveness to God. Joseph replies that other than loving Fanny, he does not have made any sin. Now Barnabas also repeats his advice saying that he might have sinned earlier. 
and again uh, told him to confess his sin. Now Abraham Adams he arrives to London in order to compel his three ceremonies to make volume of books. On his way to London he happens to enter this inn to sem- to spend some time. Now in the inn there was a discussion going when surgeon treats Joseph. The discussion was about Tillot's son. Tillot's son is an Anglican archbishop. The inn's customers start to praise Tillot's son for his sermon. They say that Tillot's son's sermons are wonderful and it has touched many people. Now Abraham, he overhears this discussion. He dislikes the praise of Tillot's son because he himself is a parson whose work itself is to give ceremonies. And even at present, he is visiting London in order to create volume of books of, of his sermons. Now, in the other end of the inn, the inn's maid Betty, she is seen in Tom Wowsey's bedroom with him. Now, seeing this, Mrs. Tom Wowsey, she sends her away. The book one ends here. Let's see book two summation. As Abraham comes to London to create a volume of his sermons, he realizes that he has left it in his house. He then decides to go back to his house with Joseph by treating him. The inn's owner say that he has to give the amount for Joseph's medication. Now for that, Abraham borrows money to a local former parishion and settles the amount to the inn's people. Now the two returns to their home in Parishan. As there was only one horse with Abraham Adams which he carried to visit London. Now they decide to take turns to ride the horse. By the time one will be walking and the other will be riding the horse in turns. Whenever Joseph gets time while riding, he happened to read the book Aeschylus. On their way to London, there was a stage coach passing them. Inside it, Mrs. Slipslop travels. Seeing Joseph, she calls him to the coach, but Joseph refuses to enter and sends Abraham Adams inside the coach. Now, inside the coach, there was a discussion going on. The discussion was about the unfortunate Leonora or the history of Leonora or the unfortunate Jilt. Now we must know that in between this novel there is digression and tale happening together simultaneously. The discussion was about Leonora. Leonora is 18 years girl. She is attractive. She attends ball dance. She likes people flattering her, seeing her as beautiful women. And many men wait to marry her. Even her family wish to get her in marriage. There was a young lawyer named Horatio. He looks awkward. He proposes her and engaged her and planned for wedding in two weeks. Now Horatio, he goes to Aternake as he is a lawyer. Meanwhile, Valermine, Valermine is a French rich man. He is too rich in a way. His cart is driven with six horses. And seeing this, Leonora likes him. As Leonora has the habit of attending ball dances, she dances with Valermine for the full night. And next day, Valermine proposes Leonora. She also accepts his proposal. Later, Horatio returns from the case. She pretends that she does not know him, behaves like an unknown person. Now, there is a sword fight happening between Horatio and Valermine. Horatio attacks Valermine and defeats him. As Leonora loves Valermine, she is worried for Valermine's defeat. Now the coach discussion ends here as they plan to eat in an inn. Now after their meal in the inn, they continue the story. When Bellarmine recovers and asks Leonora's father to marry her, 
Her father asks some amount to Bellarmine, and Bellarmine refuses to give amount of money and returns to France. Meantime, Horatio becomes rich. He does not get married. Similarly, Leonora also did not marry anyone. Now, this is the story that they discuss, which is about the unfortunate Leonora. This is just a digression. Now, inside the coach, Joseph is there. Abraham Adams walks at the front of the coach. As he has the habit of forgetting things, he walks three miles forward, thinking that the coach will arrive at the back. Then he sits in a place, awaiting for the coach. He also takes the book. Of Aeschylus and start to read it. There, Adams meet a sportsman who speaks proud about himself. He says that he is a brave and strong man who can achieve anything. And somewhere far, they hear a woman's cry who call for help. Now Abraham hears this and looks at the sportsman, but he does, did not respond. Then the sportman runs away without responding to the women's cry. Now Abraham rescues the women by beating all the robbers. The rescued woman is Fanny Goodwill, who is 19 years old, a pretty lady. But people there they file a case against Abraham and Fanny, saying that they belong to the gang of robbers. And when the people decide to make them to appear in front of the magistrate. From the crowd, a squire says that Abraham is a parson and a good man. Then the magistrate releases them from the case. Now, when Joseph happens to meet Fanny there, he feels happy. Now, the next day, they decide to marry after reaching Paris. But when Mrs. Slipslop sees Fanny and Joseph together, she feels jealous. And at the end of this part, they happen to meet Parson Tulliver. Parson Tulliver visits church on Sunday. The other days, he runs a prosperous farm. They ask some money to Tulliver to pay the rest of the money to the inn, in order to pay the inn's bill. But Tulliver refuses. But a local peddler helps them by paying money. Also, Joseph, Adams, and Fanny they hear a revelation from local peddler, and this is how this book ends. Let's see book three summation. All three plans to reach Paris from London. A group of sheep stealers. They are also murderers. They attack the three. Then they escape from sheep thieves and reaches Mr. Wilson's place. Now, Mr. Wilson, he starts to narrate his story. He is a gentleman. He says that his father died at his age 16. And from his childhood, his father made him to learn Latin. And he studied in a public school. But after his father's demise, the father had a will that says, until Mr. Wilson becomes 25 years of age, he must not use any pen from his father's account. Now, Mr. Wilson, at his young age, he behaved and lived like a playboy. He used to go for gambling and a womanizer. He tried playwriting at his young age, but that ends as a failure. He says that he was a translator. Then he was a bookseller for some time. Though he does all of these works, he had many debts. And he gets a lottery ticket and for that he is being arrested. After the arrest, he gave that lottery ticket to a man. Then as the man dies, the lottery ticket is passed to his daughter. His lottery wins for £3,000. But his ticket is with Harriet Harty. Harriet Harty is the man who bought the ticket's daughter. Miss Harriet Hardy, she writes a letter to Mr. Wilson by sending him £200 along with the letter to prison. Mr. Wilson uses that money and he is released from the prison. After release, he marries Hardy and they have three daughters. Also, he says an unforgettable sorrow. He says that he had a son as a firstborn, but gypsies had taken it from him. 
listening to these Adin's consoles that his boy will be reunited with him in the near future. He also discloses that he can find his boy in crowd and gives details about a birthmark that he has on his chest in the shape of a strawberry. After this discussion, all three start from that place. When they are about to go, they are attacked by hunting dogs. As they are three in number, they tr kill two dogs and those dogs are owned by a local squire. They three take a visit to the local squire's house in order to meet the dog's owner. The squire is a harsh man. He likes Fanny and pretends as a good man by offering accommodation for Joseph and Adams. He had a plan to rape Fanny by making Joseph and Adams to drink. But his plan fails because Peter Pounds, he's a steward who appears in the book 1. Who rescues Fanny. Here book 3 comes to end as they all three move to Paris. Book 4 starts. They all reach to Paris. Adam decides to declare Joseph and Fanny's wedding. Lady Booby gets jealous hearing this. She calls a lawyer and asks to decline the wedding or if the wedding is not declined then steps has to be taken for expellation of Joseph. Lady Booby also asks him to file a case against Joseph, but that does not work. Then Lady Booby calls a young Beau de Dapur and orders him to rape Fanny, and so the wedding may get declined. De Dapur is accompanied to perform the act, but Joseph saves her from them, so this plan also flops. After three days, Mr. Squire Booby and Pamela arrives. Squire Booby and Pamela are couples and Pamela is the sister of Joseph, all that we have seen in the character. Also Pamela is the virtuous lady from Richardson's novel. In book 3 there was a peddler who helped Adams, Joseph and Fanny to get back to Paris. So the same peddler arrives to the scene and informs that when his wife was in the dead bed she disclosed a long back secret of stealing a baby from andrew's wife and the baby when it was at the age four she sold it to sir thomas booby's family and that baby is fanny goodwill now everyone is surprised of thinking that if fanny is from mr andrew's family then she and pamela are sister and in that case, Joseph is the brother of Fanny. After hearing this, Fanny and Joseph show their regrets for wedding as it seemed to be brother and sister relationship. Now Lady Booby becomes happy because she was already planned for the wedding's decline. Also the cancellation of wedding and the relationship as brother and sister shocks everyone. On the next day, they hear another news. Now Joseph Andrews and Pamela's parents arrive. They say a different story. They say that it is true that their baby was stolen and it's a baby girl. When she is taken away, a sickly boy baby was left in a house that is Joseph Andrews. Now everyone becomes happy as Joseph and Fanny are not brother and sister. Now it gets confirmed that Andrew's daughter is Fanny Goodwill and not Joseph and Now everyone becomes happy because Fanny and Joseph are not brother and sisters. But everyone has a doubt of who is Joseph's father. Now the character Mr. Wilson appears in this scene. Hope you remember Mr. Wilson in book 3. Mr. Wilson claims Joseph has his son because he sees the birthmark in Joseph's chest and declares that he is his stolen son. The people around feel happy as they hear it because Wilson is a rich man and appreciates the virtuous nature of Joseph. Now they all plan for Joseph and Fanny's wedding on the headship of Adams in a humble ceremony. Pamela's husband Squire Booby gives some amount for Fanny. Without money, Joseph and Fanny purchase a land near Mr. Wilson's house 
and begin their life. The novel ends with this. Also, Henry Fielding announces that there is no sequel for this novel. Hope this video helps. If you have any query, please write it down to us. Thank you.